Okay, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I'm in my kayak. This is the Hobie Lynx I picked up early last year, and this is the first time I'm launching it in saltwater. In any case, both Mark and I are pretty busy with the private lessons. And if you guys want details on that, I'll link our contact information in the description. So originally this was supposed to be a jerkbait trip. But as you can see, the water clarity is pretty awful. Okay, so first fluke that hits the deck on the links. Not great, but it's a start. So second fish of the day, not much improvement, and my general rule of thumb is, if you catch two dinks in a row, it's time to move. I'll be moving quite a bit on this trip, and by the end of the day, it really does pay off. So as you can see, I'm using the standard quarter ounce gammy jig head with the six inch gulp jerk shad. And really anywhere you're fishing inshore, whether from a boat, from a kayak, or just on land, this is the only setup you need. And we've talked a lot about that. There is something magical about the six inch jerk shad on a very light jig head. The way I approach fluking from a kayak is I generally use my pedals to keep myself in place as much as possible and always cast up current. So here I'm casting into about 19 to 20 feet of water and if you'll notice at the end of the cast, so at the start of the retrieve, my line angle is flat enough that I could use a very similar pendulum swing that we do from shore. but. As your jig gets closer to the kayak, so the second half of your retrieve, that angle becomes a lot steeper. And there, you have to kind of drop your rod tip. So if you notice here, I'm not holding it on a tight line and letting it swing. If you do that, you'll swing right over the head of Fluke. I mean, you're going to be 10, 10, 12 feet off the bottom. So you do have to do a semi-slack give back on your rod tip so the jig stays within the strike zone. I'm not sure if that really makes sense. If I do future kayak videos, I'll, I'll draw diagrams and stuff to make that point very clear, but it's very important that you fish in the strike zone throughout your entire cast.
As you can see, that wasn't the best net job. Fish thrashed around at the surface. I didn't lead it into the net smoothly, but that's why I net every single short because it's all good practice and you want to fish clean. And the only way to do that is through repetition. You got a nice straight jig, you got it? Yeah, yeah, but it swallowed the jig so I can't even release it. It's not gonna live. Oh. And I'm not keeping any fish, so. Oh, okay, I'll take them then. There Don't you tell go. my wife I didn't catch one. There you go. You got it? Uh, yeah, I got all it. Right. I'll put them in here and then I throw water in. It's like my live well. There you go. Measure, so just measure him again just to be sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it's 18 and a half. Nice. Yeah. Perfect. So crazy, huh? <laughs> Thank you, huh? Good luck. and it's time to move but before we do that let me just show you my friend Zorin's whole setup here he's got a PA-12 you've seen him before in previous videos but he's developed a pretty unique fluking method and as you can see he's got a rod holder on either side he's basically slow trolling and Normally, I would look at something like this and just shake my head. And it's, it's sort of the opposite of our approach to fluking, which is, you know, a single jig, everything very simple, very elegant. But Zorin has caught a lot of keepers off of that rig. I mean, he's... If you ever make YouTube videos, He'll, he'll show you some stuff that you've probably never seen before. But in any case, here's just a look at his setup. He's got the Torquedo in the back, pedals in front, which is the best way to power your kayak. You don't want to replace your pedal drive with a motor. And there you see his crazy rig. He's got basically a high-low and then a trailing hook behind like a three or four ounce sinker and he just slowly trolls around and picks up a lot of fish so anyway here I'm in a brand new spot and again I'm making macro moves right um, I catch a few fish if they're small if they're barely keepers then I'm going to a deeper spot or I'm going to a shallower spot you want to resist the urge to just wiggle around throughout the day to me you should devote at least half your day to exploring whatever area you're fishing. And that brings us to our final destination of the day where I pick up a couple of pretty nice fish. And this is by far the shallowest I've fished all day. right here notice how the fish flattens out and then you can really feel the weight a lot of times bigger fluke would do that to you especially in shallow water they're going to come in really easy and then at some point they're going to start fighting you vertically It's a fluke, fluke. So these fish are coming out less than 10 feet of water and if you're fishing that shallow from a kayak, especially if you have a pedal yak and you insist on vertically jigging using enough weight to hold bottom and using the wind or the current to push you, you're doing it wrong. You use your pedals to hold yourself in position and you cast up current. That is by far the most efficient and natural presentation if you're fishing shallow. Mm -hmm. 
Once again, it glides in easy and right there, dead weight. As you can see, I'm being pretty careful with the drag setting. I'm backing off on the drag. Usually you want a strike setting so that when you set the hook, you can actually sink that hook point past the barb. But then some, somewhere in the middle, you want to start backing off your drag. And you see there, I never let the fish break surface, never chase the fish with your net. And I kind of aborted that one attempt. The tide and current is doing weird things to my boat positioning, so that's okay. As long as you don't let them break surface and you're fighting them smoothly and steadily, they don't tend to freak out. That's what you want. You want them to freak out once they're in the net. So peeking into this harbor really paid off and, you know, not the biggest fish in the world, but I'm happy with that. And check this out. I think that's the furthest fluke skip I've ever seen. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. And if you're interested in shore based private lessons, reach out to me or Mark. I'll leave our information in the description below along with all the gear and tackle I used today. Alright, tight lines.